Ladies and gentlemen, guys, gals, and non-binary pals, welcome back to ETF2L Autumn 2024. We have made it all the way to the last week of the regular season. This is now it's time for absolutely all the marbles on the table because right now, if you go to those tables on ETF2L, there is a fourth place looking ready for basically anyone to take and guard it tonight. Have a bit of an uphill battle here against the first seed of Mandem. But uh, should they be able to take many of any points here tonight, it will be a huge bout success for them making it to playoffs. My name is Wandom, joined tonight by J Max on production. Oh my god. <clears throat> and Ben PL on my co caster. I just accidentally swallowed something wrong. Uh, <laughs> save me. I will save you. Yeah, it's him. I can't believe it's week seven already. The season seems to have absolutely flown by. And like you say, the final week. And I had a glance at the tables. Like I normally write some something on like um, on the TFTV forums where you try and work out who needs what. But at this point, like there's so many games still left to play. There's still that um the four fence um Pepe's Pizza Party game that got default and undefaulted. And so there's five games this week still coming up. And like you say, nigh on anyone going to finish fourth. Man them, they're, they're in the clear. They're, they're at the top. I think they might be able to finish second, depending if this goes horrendously wrong for them, but they're in the clear. Garder, on the other hand, this is a must-win for them. And to be quite honest, in a must-win situation, I'm not too happy if I look at the other side of the server and I see Mandem there. Yeah, this is uh, this is definitely an uphill battle for Garda for sure. I think they've been having some decently impressive showing against the top teams, but never really been able to eke out enough points to really sort of set them alongside the rest of the top teams that you'd expect of sort of the, the, the clear top three that we've seen this season of, of Skedda, Magnum, and, uh, and New Panzer. They're kind of sitting in this fourth spot where, where honestly, I'm, I think, through a combination of kind of, in my eyes, what is a bit of an underperformance from the Frenchies, and then now also, I think, Garda Panteri are kind of performing up to the level that they were last season of being this sort of contender for fourth place team. There's a, and then just the way the season has gone as well, with the contestion of the top three teams, so no one's really sort of Everyone's kind of taking points from everyone, right? We're in the situation where now Garda, if they can eke out any points, not only can they spoil the first place finish for Mandem, they could also spoil the uh, the fourth place for a couple other teams as well tonight. Yeah, like you say, it's so, so tense around that, that, that part of the division, but let, let it be real. Garda, they, they need to perform, and they're a team that uh, over, over time, they've been known for, for being inconsistent. They can beat the best, but they can also lose to the teams all down at the bottom. Like, it, you'd never know with Garda what team is going to show up. So it just it just needs to be their day, and perhaps it's maybe not the day they had to get a Merc in. They've got Utka coming in, obviously did great last season, but losing your pocket scout for... The, uh, the final game of the season in this much spin scenario. Maybe not ideal for them, but over the other side, a couple of mercs as well. Nubby is uh, coming in over on Roma, of course. Haunt's not able to make it in. And Blank as well coming in as a sub for Lardox. So an entirely new soldier duo over for the Mandem team. Like, What do you make of these mercs? How do you think that might uh, might affect the game? I mean, I think obviously losing your pocket scout's a really big deal for the side of... Uh, for the side of Garda, but I also do believe, like, to be completely honest, I mean, because this is a player who's played with this team last season, he's not completely foreign to the way that they like to play the game, and it is, it is Shappy who's doing a lot of the heavy lifting of the calling there. I think a more interesting sort of discussion probably falls into Mandem now having to play without their soldier duo, right? I mean, Blank has played with them a decent amount. We saw him win the finals with them last season, so he's not completely stranger to the team. And honestly, I think on an individual level as well, I don't know about you, Ben Piel, but I would probably, to be completely honest, I'd still probably take Nubby on Roma over over Haunts any day of the week. Yeah, there's just the the flashiness that Nubby brings, right? You see it all the time, and we saw it in uh, in the cups over the summers, like the Bud Cup and such. Like, like just I don't know, Bud just all um, so excuse me, Nubby just always has just like a random med kill, a, man, a random crazy bomb, a crazy air. Just just there's the frag movie clips that come out of this guy are absolutely unreal. So yeah, having that just on your subs bench, ready to wheel out at any given moment, is an absolute huge huge asset for Mandem. But on the map like process as well, there's plenty of opportunities, big wide open map, plenty of space to go for things like that. So since like we're getting live rather soon, have you got any uh, any predictions for how you think process might go? I think I, I still believe, I think just this will probably come down to a bit more of a scout duo diff. And one thing that we haven't talked about quite yet is I do really believe in this, in this random scout duo being quite strong uh, today. So with, with that in mind, honestly, I, I don't really see going much of a way other than, than Mandem taking taking all three points here in this map number one. We might see a golden cap, but I think more than that, yeah, it's probably uh, all we're going to see from this expect some nubby sniper at some point but we are live once again this is week seven 
BTFL Autumn 2024 final week as Gardner Pantaria go in and try to secure their spot in the playoffs versus Madden were on mid already. Yeah, Nubi getting absolutely deleted there straight away on Fancy to the mid. Really starting to explode now at four. Garda Shappy bombing in two, and it's all about Mandem. Can they even get out of this? They're having to back up, and that one kill onto Bud is going to slow things down slightly for the Garda offense. But two super, super quick kills at the start of that mid. We are out in an absolute flash in this game. That was such a quick mid and such early aggression there from Matt. From Garda, just undis un sort of countered by Mandem instead. Now, they're down two players trying to hold on to second. We are sucking in Juxta quite far just to see if we can find an opening kill, but it doesn't really get anything. So instead, now Nubby, he's just in onto the bed and just completely <laughs> gets the force. One minute into the game, and we've already had the first successful sack in from Nubi. What a play that was straight in through IT. Really, really big play over onto Theos. But now it's all about the rest of the team. Can them get in? You're going to lose damage to Obi, who does force out that Uber charge, so it's not all in vain. Over four guards. They are going to have to concede mid. They're going to get their spawners in, and they're going to be able to set up an even hold on the second point. They are still down a soldier, so there is an open window here for Mandem, should they want to go really fast and play off that single player advantage as they do have but instead they're electing to sit back and yeah that force onto 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 june there at the end is super super nice actually giving theos a bit of an advantage here right already up at 70 percent there's about a 30 percent advantage now lardox off classing to that scout sitting around in pc for now trying to look to see if any push is coming out but they're not quite yet they should be aware here mandip that there is is an uber advantage and bud is already in onto middle but early damage onto Gorn goes down already bud not quite hitting the air shot now so a lot of ground denied here for mandip who kind of hold on successfully two frags now both are just down this is oh, has the up for Theos. This is not successful. Oh, I really thought Theos was going to get caught there as well. Just holds onto the Uber. But maybe how much longer though? The push comes through. Uber charge almost ready over for the blue side. As now these last three remaining players over on guard, and they've got a real battle coming their way. Ball the fancy Nubi all there in the choke, trying to spam forward, trying to get as much damage as they can to potentially force out this Uber from Theos. But the spawn is getting in, and it looks like for now Garda might be holding, but it's still looking pretty tense. Yeah, the bomb's coming Nubby. in from Nubby here, and it just gets a little soldier. Or scout kill, rather. I don't think he's going to get much more, so he's trading one for one. Oh, but it what? opens the door for Fancy. Look how the forwards is playing, and it's so much damage. Now this Uber can come across, but Boulder, uncharacteristically, not quite finding the shots he needs to hit onto Theos. That's a super, super late pop. The cleanup is coming out, and Shappy with a nice bomb. Doesn't find any kills. Instead, June, 20 HP, gets out alive, and now the 1v1s. They're just not quite winning on the side it. of Garda, and it's a collapse from Mandem. Nice rocket from Dawn in the end, but can you hold on to this by yourself? The health bars not quite there for Mandem for now, so we're going to get a bit of a refight here, but it's fancy down again. Oh, if only there was a scout in that uber charge there with Shappy bombing in towards the choke. You saw the HPs were so, so weak over on the Mandem side, but there was just no one there to finish it off. Shappy did everything he could, but did not find the all-important frags. And in particular, that one over onto Uppy, who's now sitting at about a 50% advantage for when this second point gets capped up. So it's potentially a good enough one to push off as they're already starting to pressure in Nubi, having a look into two, but Garda, they want to fight this. They know they don't want to sit last with this side. They need to battle. They're going in and they're finding an early kill here. Decent damage onto Lardox as well, down to 8 HP. But now you've lost another player, Gorn down. Oh, You're setting in three here, losing all of them. And you don't really have an Uber to fight with. This is still massive advantage here for poor the points. As it's just Lardox <laughs> on the flank, massive cap time as the Uber's going to come forward. And now with Shappy dead, it's just one scout holding the point. And I think a bit of a misstep, some over aggression here from Garda. And it just leads Mandem to a clean 1-0. Yeah, I completely respect the decision there to go and try and fight second, but I, they just committed so, so hard. Losing three players, just trying to delay on that second point, it, it's never going to end well, and especially with Uber charges coming up. We've seen sort of one slightly flubbed Uber from Boulder. That's it now for the rest of the game. It's, uh, Boulder is back on rock-solid form. And yeah, 1-0 already, and what a, what a pushback that was from Mandan. They had one slip on mid, but they flew straight back in. So mid-fight number two, we'll see if Garda can pick up where they left off in terms of these mid-fights. It's early damage onto Fancy one like, once again. Both soldiers really wanting to go and make his life difficult, but this time around he manages to live the early game and instead it's Nubby bombing in, doesn't quite hit the air shot, but it's a lot of damage. All of Garda are just stuck in oh, choke oh, oh, and it lets Walder clean them up. Fancy absolutely free. Fancy elf is in as well. So much damage. And I think Theos might just get it alive, but oh, that's maybe it. not. Could be. Oh, oh, what? 
That's crazy, that surf! I thought, no, we had that on a platter, but Theo somehow surfs away to spawn. But, like, how much is this even going to matter? Midpoint's getting couched up, second's getting couched up as well. And they're still in a really rough scenario. It could have been a lot, lot worse, but Theos will have an uber charge to defend this last point with. That was some crazy movement out of the Garda Medic. That was so massive for them. He goes down, the round is basically over. The surfs are so brilliant. Going in, making it all the way to spawn, getting that resupply now. It's even Ubi, she can still man him. Now peeking in onto last. The pace should slow down just a tiny amount because there is a gun up, sniper up, but the sentry gun spammed down already, meaning that this sniper out of Utka. It's an early headshot here onto the soldier. Scout's running in as well. They're trying to get aggressive here. Ah, oh, man, they're trying to just pressure, cook them forwards, get this Uber out of Theos, but the headshot. Shappy! And <laughs> now Shappy with you here. Scout's in as well. Does get shot down with trading kills out of everyone, but it's just fine here. Look at Fancy. Has to run out. Everyone on Mandem just has to run back. Fancy Roll maybe getting caught, does get caught on the way through, only two surviving from Mandem and that pressure just did not work out all the combination of the Sniper and Shappy hitting some clutch clutch sticky bombs up towards rollout meant they were able to hang on to it as now they're able to get some kind of setup here on second, Fancy Denied forward spawn is going to slow things down a tad for Mandem as they're trying to get Nubby in behind already who is maybe not long for this world, going to get battled in lobby, yeah he's going to fall eventually as now pressure can come in, one soldier down and the scout down too, and Garda, they see it, the opportunity to go. Yeah, Garda looking to just get through choke here, but they do still have the sniper who just finds a headshot and lifts his weight immediately, right? <laughs> sniper Uber. Early kill there, but it's a sniper Uber, as you're saying, and the demo man has fallen here. Shappy down, and now you're putting so much faith into Utka to continue hitting these headshots. You're doing a decent job of it, but Gorn in behind tries to get the rockets onto June, and she's so low. But she just barely manages to live, and now the sniper up on his lonesome with Fancy up chasing the medic. I think we have to run really far back here. Yeah, and there is a boulder running in as well onto Utka, who is uh, in a little bit of danger here over towards five. He's maybe going to get out a bit longer. But uh, in the meantime, Uffy has been uh, has been building Uber diligently, and over on Theos' side, I think Theos is more concerned about getting out alive. And I'm not going to lie, I do not blame him at all for that. But the punishment is that oh. Mandem will have a bit of an advantage of big trade coming out oh. over on these fast and the point to spawn too. Oh my word. This giant headshot there from Utka just finding the headshot onto the medic. But you have to watch out, there's so much pressure on the point. Huge rockets there onto the scouts as well. And now everyone on guard are coming a bit alive as we're keeping it up. Boulder shut down by the bud bomb. Oh, great, great stuff there on the defense. And again, Utka, we saw this sniper so, so active last season for Garda and had some great, great output. And we're seeing it again process one of the best maps in the pool to do it on. And when your sniper's hitting shots like that, it all is going to end good for you. But nobody on the other side, we've seen plenty of sniper highlights over from him too. And he's going to go the sniper over out towards Sewer. But no one was there to peek because now the push comes in. Uber add, Uber used as well for Garda as they're trying to push through. They're going to not get too much in the way of frags so far, but they are going to secure this middle point and maybe try and press in a bit further. Yeah, they don't get any kills. It's so, so low on blank, but instead he lives on 3 HP. And that opening soldier kill, not getting that disastrous now for, for Garda, right? Because it allowed Venom to just come right back in. But now, there we go. Blank has fallen down as the scout sitting alone on the point, trying to pressure this out on his own. Garda looking to fight this a little bit. They found another go onto Lardox, another kill onto Nubby. It's three down now for Mandem. They do pop the Zuba. It's a solo onto Boulder and it's a clean two shot onto Shappy here. But they have to use the remainder of the Uber to run back out because there's one soldier bombing in onto them. And that means the Teos now 50% advantage here. And Garda, there's still one pick to work with, but they're down to themselves, including a demo man who's going to build up on mid, try to get this Uber up as fast as possible and push on the advantage. Yeah, there's still about another 10 seconds until this Uber comes up, which means that uh, the Budden Shappy have got plenty of time to start rolling out onto this mid puppy, of course, trying as hard as she can to get this Uber charge up, but they're sat so, so passive. They know what's coming. They know that an Uber charge could be right around the corner. As now, Utka Shappy, they're getting ready in through the choke. Seems like they're trying to get in for free or at least get as much space as they can without using it. They're trying to bully their way through. Juxta actually caught out on low ground and Bud for every week too. So maybe this might be spiraling slightly out of control because Uppy 90% is almost going to get this uber charge in time. Fancy taking damage over towards the shutter too. But so many players dropping on Garda for this uber and Theos still hasn't popped dropping four players. And Utka, Ladox in two. This is crazy stuff that uber finally comes out. But for what cost? They lost four players for it and they have to use their uber just to run away and even getting out here. 
This is so, so hard. Now Theo's oh. not able to serve this one. As a cleanup coming in from Nubby, capitalizing off of the plays of Garda. Once again, I like the play, right? The, the, the theory makes sense. You have advantage, try to push it into second. But Mandem doing such a good job of delaying that push in, finding all of those frags because Theo doesn't want to pop there. It's the bud again. Just has boulders numbered, crushes him there with the double. Yeah, great couple of rockets there, and that just slows things down so, so much when the pocket scout goes down. Have to rotate your other scout in to taxi the medic around, and actually they're going to have to taxi themselves back out because Shappy gets killed over the flank. Juxta is going to lose the fight there against Nubby in IT, but all this fighting back and forth, all this trading of players is just working in Garda's favour. They're at massive, massive disadvantage here as the Uber Charge comes in from Mandem, but who's home? Shappy, I believe, and that might be about it. Yawn going to try and retreat out through top lobby also, and they have one kill and a point. It, it's worth it for the Uber, but it could have been a heck of a lot worse for Garda because now they're able to set up some kind of defense and last with no demo though, it might be a little bit rough for these first few 10 seconds. Yeah, right now, for now, they're just going to have to sit back. It's still big 80% here for the side of Theos. He built this up quite fast, but it's a sniper on the side of Juck, you know, on the side of Juxta, right? And that, I think, slows down the pace a lot. It's going to go back to Scout because they should actually, I think it looks like, yeah, they're just willing to push on this Uber at advantage here. So they're going in, Bud already sitting on top, just sort of scoping out the area. Eating some spam damage, farming off the damage taken logs, and now the Uber's coming forward. But Mandem very prepared for this. They saw this coming from a mile Ooh. away. No kills really to be found, but quite not hitting the skybox. Instead, the rockets are coming out, but the cleanup kills are being found in the back line. Nubby, Bardox both try to go in behind to get the back cap. They don't find it now. June, two players down, but she has an Uber charge to work with. Garda barely has control of the high ground. They're looking to go right back in this. This could be another solo onto Bud, onto Boulder. It could, but they're, they're, they're losing a player already. Blank goes down, second point has flipped. The force finally comes out, and everyone on the guard side, they're able to just scurry away into the distance. And I'm not sure this Uber charge is really going to get anything in the way of kills. Yes, he gets the second point, but we might be in to engage sort of like flip flop around the second point. Not something you see every day as the Uber charges, the advantages just constantly flip back and forth. But now this collapse in could be the difference maker as two players fall. Nice little directs there over into rollout, and Shappy Bud Juxta all falling in the midst of it. Means that actually guard, they're really against the wall here. Yeah, this is Garda once again, just getting a bit overexcited, walking in when they really shouldn't, and not finding the frags. There's Mandem coming out with these trades, and that means once again, it feels like Garda, they're walking out of last in a situation where it's even Ubers. There's no one, neither team has Uber, and you're just trusting yourself to win the DM fight. You don't. That's a round over, and Mandem now up 2 0. And these have been fast rounds, to be honest. There's 17 minutes left, plenty of time for Garda, right? But this is a down advantage early here, and they have to climb their way out of this. Oh, absolutely, and and yeah, like you say again, it was also with those Uber trades on that on that second point. But yeah, Garda getting caught out once more as you now the one solace they've got is their their first mid was good, the second was uh, didn't go quite their way, and this time it seems like it was a slower affair over towards their own choke. The over the ball continues. Soldiers now all four in the air, all exchanging themselves across the map. Will be taken very very weak over to a death corner. It is taken down, but in trade form. Nigh on everybody over on the Garda side. But Kalast alive, going to try and clean up what he can. Doesn't manage to find the kill to Baldi, who survives with just five points of health. So Mandem win the mid, but both medics going down. There's potential to re aggress here from Garda. It's a fancy up, oh, fancy. camping oh, on last. Dear. And Blank. Trying to make sure it's Blank in there as well. Just trying to see if they can find anything. Oh. And he does get a kill onto Juxta, which is fine. It's not a medic that he wants to, but it's a decent scout kill now. Has to run out with his life intact as Utka. Desperately wants to snipe that demo man, but he lives for now. Well, early scout pick advantage here. We're gonna have to see if they go in. It's not advantage here for June quite yet. It's about 30% for her, but Theos now can build up quite fast. It's a crits on June though. She's building faster and she clearly wants to go in and see if she wants to pop over onto Fancy. She's doing crazy crits is out of Fancy previously as the walk comes in before this crits oh is even God. ready. Oh my dear, they don't even need the crit stickies because Fancy is landing everything regardless. Blank will be panic room two, two players already down and so oh over to go and the crits comes in. Oh, it's nuclear. Yeah, this is disgusting out of Fancy. I've just walks in, hit every sticky. They have like 200 damage eat. The crits is an afterthought as they go in and yes, it kills the medic towards the end. As Theos barely dies before he gets Uber, but yeah, Jesus Christ. You're just sending this in before the Uber comes out. You get two kills before your crit creek goes off in the first place. And it's such a miracle push here for Mandem. Not a miracle, just a gorgeous push. And now they're up 3 0. 15 minutes. And this is going from a close game to suddenly we're up 3 0 in 15 minutes. And, and this, we're nearing scary territory here for God. Oh, they have to find some momentum back. 
They, they, the way they're designed to do this, they have rolled out with the Bud Spy, and uh, maybe the mid hasn't quite gone their way to begin with because Dubi instantly trading out for Shafi as a trade that Mandem are very, very happy to take. But the second soldier will not be there as he sneaks all the way around, trying to find a position to perhaps get onto one of these high-value targets over towards the enemy side of the mid. The rest of the team sort of faking a bit of aggression here, faking a bit of presence. As now the last two are having to run all the way back, so this is Bud's time to shine. Bud's time to go for something bigger. The decloak comes in. Oh, oh dear. No. Uh, oh, with oh, maybe the pistol. Oh, oh no, nope. it's flat. This is uh that's a classic uh that's a bit of a tilt <laughs> mid, right? You go to the spider yeah. mid, you try to make it work, but instead it just kinda does nothing. Now you're down a player. Look at this, because it's a slight ad from Mandem. And Bud is down, which means there's a player advantage for them pushing in off of. They can easily sack a player in, in here at least, but instead it looks like Mandem are just feeling themselves in this trade, trying to pressure cook out a potential even last cap, which is Uber Force onto Theos so good. Point already half captain. Look at the health bars on this red side. Theos forced to pop, but has already one scout down. Soldier sitting in panic room, and yes, he's finally killed the fancy. But the Uber comes out so much later here for June as a flash more players, but just two scouts to the point, and now it's 4-0. That that was a, that was a crazy crazy push to watch. I I like I've never seen a team when it's even Ubers like that. They get so much space into last just completely for free. There's just the threat of them walking forward like guard. They're, they're all tunneled up in panic room all the way back in the far corner. And there's players on the point. There's players near the side of the panic room. There's players all over lobby. This, the entire last is covered before the Ubers even come out. All the space was taken completely for free. And yeah, four 0 down. It's still down to panic stations because Utka now is coming up on the sniper to mid but Shappy completely deleted on this mid again down to about 10 HP has oh to get Arrow God. back up and Yawn's gone down and oh it's falling apart at the seams for Garda. Yeah this is an absolute disaster mid. Yes it's going to be slow paced either way because you're running the sniper to mid but just having a Roma completely shut down in PC your demo man doesn't get to go no be. choke because nobody no be. in. and now we're just in and absolutely <laughs> nuking everyone on the red side. Utka doesn't quite find anything instead now down to 3 HP and there's this man of just Bossing that way through choke, no one could touch them. Pipe out of out of fancy from a mile away. Shappy the only one left standing on second. Make him fall as well. And yeah, what can you do here? It feels like Garda completely mentally checked out of this map. They're just not putting anything in to Mandem anymore. Yeah, absolutely. They've got two soldiers at a second to block this for a bit. It's gonna send some players back, and Uppy is maybe getting caught awkwardly here in rollout. Is he, how is she not forced? Oh my how, god! What? What? That is madness! Doesn't even take fall damage. She That's perfectly serves that. That's oh, insane. What? Now the Uber just coming to last, and it's so hard for Garda to hold right because they're all just falling. Everyone's <laughs> falling at the seams. Lava. He's not main class. It doesn't matter. Cap the point. That's five nil. <laughs> that 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 is one of the crazy. That that. that, that. <laughs> I, I have no idea how she lives. She's like literally point blank with a soldier in a claustrophobic little corridor and somehow gets out with the surf, doesn't take fall damage and doesn't even force the uber charge. Well, that just puts a pin on a, what was an absolutely utterly dominant performance. Like, yeah, Mandem, they get the 5-0. There was a couple of early chances for Garda to get in the game, but I think, yeah, once once they went 3-0 down, the tilt mids came in and uh, things just spiralled out of control so, so quickly. But what a quality performance that was from Mandem. I, I'm still just shook over that June play. The <laughs> so good. Of mind to know That's that you're so not going to crater there as well, right? But she knows that she can surf it and then... She has, the, she has the air strafe onto the staircase so she doesn't die to fall damage and drop the uber. And just does it so perfectly. That was gorgeous. <laughs> Absolutely insane out of June. And yeah, that was a, it, it, it started out quite contested, right? For the first like 10-ish minutes, 8 minutes or something, that first round was back and forth. Really interesting. And then Mandium just kicked into gear, right? And suddenly it felt like, God, you said there were a few tilt mids, but again, like it feels like when they're they try to take these even trades, and when you're just coming out behind in all of these trades, because you're just getting, I felt like, to be completely honest, it's kind of hands diffed, mechanical diffed, in, on an individual level, you kind of have to go for the awkward, weird plays, and when those don't work either, it's just, like, what can you do? Yeah, especially on a map like Prost as well. Like it's one of those where, like, when when you're getting mechanical uh, mechanical oh, diff, like you say, as the logs are showing now, Jesus like that's Christ. like <laughs> there's nothing you can do. What do you do on on process when a scout is going thirty and four, like dropping four hundred DPM? There's like there's two of the players getting like crazy. I don't know. Like what what do you do against this? There's, I actually cannot think of anything. <laughs> like there's no words. I feel like this is a you 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 just kind of have to laugh it off. You know, like this is a map we went in. 
We tried something. It worked for five minutes. We got clapped. You just need to kind of take that mental reset and go next, right? I think there's not much else. Maybe if you're a bit mad and you're tilted, whatever, take a five minute breather, go outside, like look at the stars or the moon, howl at it maybe a little bit, and then come back inside <laughs> and then and then be ready for map number two. But but yeah, I think the logs on your screen tell you everything you need to know. This is Boulder going 30 for 4 and with 430 DPM as well. <laughs> this this is this is what we get for criticizing the Boulder Uber in the first th in like the first yeah. minute of the game. This he is missed, what we he get. missed three shots on a demo man. My bad. <laughs> that was the, that was the three misses of the entire game. Yep, that's like, my fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you put you put the curse. Boulder was like heard us and was like, "Yep, yeah, that's it. I shall not miss a single shot for the entire rest of the game." Uh, but yeah, like you say, they've got to reset on Guardi. You've got to just take the, take the time. You've got to roll with the punches and uh, hope that Sunshine is going to bring something different for them because, yeah, like, the, the, there was there was a gulf in quality here on this first map, like, on a mechanical and a coordinational level, just across the board. And yeah, 5-0 starts, 20-minute game, that, that shows it. I think it's also just, I think I think something that's interesting that I'm seeing here right now is, is yes, there's a bit of a heels per minute diff which, which on these medics, which is kind of, to be expected, right? But it's also June just building the Ubers way, way faster as well compared to, to, to Theos there on average. This is a whole like four or five seconds ahead and I'm not quite sure if that's combined with the crits or not. Maybe there's a really smart person in chat that can tell me. Um, maybe add like a Denshi mode or something to make sure that um, I <laughs> don't know what I'm talking about. But now, okay, Ben. We had map number one. It wasn't close. We're going into sunshine now. Are we going to see anything else? What are we going to see now? Well, I'm I'm cautiously optimistic for for Garda on Sunshine because it's a map they've played a couple of times this season and it's gone pretty well. They beat the Frenchies on it in uh, week two, I believe, and then they had a, they had a five all the other week. And uh, and I've been critical in the past of like in, in previous seasons and also a little bit in the early early parts of this season that like their their Sunshine their their last pushes they've had some some unfortunate clips made of them where uh, they've they've uh, been beefing some pushes. It seems that those solutions have come through to some extent this season. It's been a lot better. Um, so this, this I'm, I'm guessing this is their map pick. They've, they've looked good in it so far, and yeah, maybe process just wasn't their day for it. So sunshine could be it. We'll have to see. I think, yeah, I, I think you should take a look at those logs, right? You, you just kind of need to go for the mental reset. It really felt like Mandem just. Yes, they're not playing with their full roster, but, but it just really when it feels like a player quality diff like that, I think. I, at least for me, Ben, it's very hard for me to predict anything other than, than, than another victory for, for Mandem. We'll have to see how close it is because I feel like it really depends on, on what the mental is like after after you lose that. But 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 yeah, I mean, we're talking about it, right? Obviously, Balder and, and, and Fancy sort of pulling them apart at the seams, but I think also the flank as well. It's Nubby doing such a good job coming in, making life so difficult for the enemy team as well on that Roma roll. Really, really hard to play against if you're not used to it. And uh, yeah, we're going to have to see Garda. Do you think they could step up here? Yeah, I, I'm not going to go as far as to say I think they can win, but I, I think I can see this being a bit more competitive. Like, so long as so long as the mental isn't completely gone, which, which to be quite honest, after a game like that, if I was playing, the mental would be absolutely shot. So if they're able to bounce back in, in that regard, I think I think they've got they've got a chance. Like, cause, like they had chances early on in the game, right? In over on process, they had a couple of pushes that didn't quite go their way. But we'll find out soon. I I, I have money. I think they're going to get at least a round here. I don't think it's going to be as crazy as before. As we roll out for the first mid, we've got Mandem once again over there in the blue and in the red. We've got Garda in their must-win game. Haven't won the first map, but these last three points could be very, very valuable if they're able to do a miracle and get something out of this second map. It's early damage from Nubby there, in onto Shappy, really trying to find that kill. Doesn't quite get it because the arrows come through, but it's so much damage. Really slowing down Garda for Terry, but you want early damage on to June as well. Has to play a bit passively, but look at the health bars there now. Two soldiers down for the side of Mandem. All of the scouts have to do all of the heavy lifting, I say, because Fancy Elf somehow in some way finds a pipe there on to Shappy now. The scout trying to run into him as well. Eat some early damage, but now we're finding that kill to Fancy. Decent health already, but that soldier up on the high ground trying to do his damnedest to keep these guys off in. of the enemy. Out are doing so much and it's a force onto Theos. Doesn't have anyone to connect with and this Uber's a disaster. Oh, I really thought those spawning bombers were gonna work in the way of Garda, but it just does the absolute opposite. OP just didn't take any damage and just I think you know what? I, like you don't have to shoot me ever when it falls, just sits on the point and is chill the whole time. Shappy getting caught again, only two survivors for Garda as they have to run their way back out. Jokes are going for a very, very ambitious feed there over onto OP. Not gonna get 
onto her that easily now as Demoman down, full Uber add. Second point isn't capped yet, but does it even need to be because the push is already coming in. The already in on last hit. This is Nubby being so aggressive as he likes to be. Early, early kill there on Debut, and now we're just on last, right? And they, can, they can't leave their spawn. They're getting spawn capped here by everyone. They're taking a lot of damage, trying to make it work, and they are finding one kill onto Boulder, but it's just fancy elf in the corner. Oh, so much what is damage. damage comes across. Everything hits, and it's just a complete collapse. One scout stands the point, and that's a dominant first round on the side of Mandem. I think Fancy's angry about getting out DPM last game by Boulder and uh, wants, uh, <laughs> wants to be at the top this time round because that was some crazy, crazy damage there over towards that right spawn at the end of that Uber. And again, it's just it's just so quickly. As soon as there's like a, an advantage goes the way of Mandem, like it, it's around within 30 seconds of that. Like there's a bad Uber on mid, that is it. Round over instantly. There's no mistakes, no slip ups, no messing about, no wasting around, wasting time or anything like that. Straight through, straight into last and capping the point out. And we are already rolling out of a mid fight number two and I said it might go a bit better time for guards it was looking okay on the mid before but they've got some work to do if they to get that all important round I mentioned yeah last bit we really saw them fall behind in that end game of the mid fight this time around Blanken super aggressive as well and some massive mandem collapse across the board Vios is disconnected from the rest of his team and with just two players alive it's Juxta and Yawn on their own with 30 HP apiece and they just get rocketed down here tune completely completely untouched and it is a absolute complete wipe here for Mandem. They're walking into second uncontested. Oh dear. Um, <laughs> this isn't looking too good, is it? Over for Garden. They're getting their spawners in, they're trying to get some kind of setup around, but Blank already taking aggro space all the way up in the top of lobby and this Uber charge is it gonna be coming in very, very shortly. Oh, it's getting caught out on the snipe too, really not what you want when you're trying to hold last one extra player. Down is going to make this so, so much harder as the Uber charge is ready to be popped at any moment. Push comes in from the far left, Boulder, Fancy, Uppy all running across the point, trying to get onto these spawns, trying to lock them down. Fancy, they're blank, both nuking towards these spawn doors, and they can't even leave the spawn. There's no space at all, and man them 2 0 up in less than four minutes. We are on speed run time here. Yeah, man, don't want to go to sleep. They've got work in the morning. <laughs> we don't have time to play the silly video game. Doing such a good job of just shutting Garda out of their own last. That demo, super aggressive in, uncontested, managing to spam down that right side, or that left side rather, that you would normally play to sort of try off and um, sort of play that space that the heavy will deny, right? But the heavy can't get out if there's five stickies in the face the moment he spawns. We're back on middle now. It's early damage onto Nubby, this time not getting quite as aggressive as Garda might have found their way in onto the middle here. Yeah, Shafi got launched away very, very early, but has managed to find his way back in. But in the meantime, Yorn and Lardo's going one for one over there in Red Cafe. So they are somehow getting some kind of setup going, but Nubi, Utka both getting frags as now we are into Utka Carnage, but four players up versus the three, but Theos getting caught in the. Oh, I'm so, so weak. I thought that last bit of damage there could have maybe tipped the scales over towards death. But Theos Nubi is in as well. Shappy doing whatever he can to try and escort this medic out. But Theos has run oh all the God. way home. The sword kill comes out as well. The disrespect. Theos gets out alive this time, which is something. But for how much longer? Nubi's already in last. And I don't know. I don't know what to think at this point. Yeah, I mean, this is Mandem now. They've got this kill onto the demo man, which means that they can be super aggressive. Should they please? Instead, it's Utka right now in that lobby. Does manage to find the opening kill on it to Nubby. So, no immediate aggression. Instead, it's actually Garda still sat on middle on Mandem. And now Garda, they've managed to wrest control of second, at least for now. Boulder kind of looking quite aggressive here. In onto Flowers. This is Scout. He might want to piece off. They're just going straight in for the trade here. As both Scouts flash for the blue team. So, no real trade coming out. It's not quite successful. But Yawn, in the meantime, the health bars on this flank. It's disgusting for the side of Garda. Somehow losing everyone. June, another masterclass of dodging. Finally goes down to the stickies from Shappy, but this should be enough for now. We're holding desperately Garda, trying to find some semblance of a fight, but instead we're just regrouping towards Cafe. Yeah, they're trying to burst their way in, but losing the demo man is not ideal for them. Fancy again and Boulder doing so much damage on this way in. But all importantly, Theos did manage to stay alive that entire time in Cafe. And honestly, the aggression there I thought was really, really good from the Garda side. They were pushing you from Choke, pushing you from Cafe. They caught a couple of players there in the crossfire in front of the point. And now we see them in their first real advantageous situation of this game. They're with a sniper, which is maybe not the class they're wanting at this point. But Theos at 70%, Uber Charge almost ready. And they're starting to work their way in through this choke. 
It's a headshot oh, for Marlox. That's a decent start. Now Nubby's in as well. Does not get the kill onto Theos as he is still. Not that 90%. This is a decent advantage for them to play off of. Mandem do not quite have this Uber, but Renown remove. Garda needs to go fast here, but they just don't. They're not in in time because this Slifer. It slows them down. Now June, 100% herself. is 150 damage onto the Soldier. The Uber is coming forward, but it's a trade kill. Already a headshot onto Nubby is nice, but the counter Uber is coming in onto Boulder. And now Garda and Terry, they don't have any position on this mid because Boulder and Lardux are cleaning house. It's two Maybe one alive here. Shappy only one up. Everyone falls. The push is a disaster. And now it's Mandem taking control of second once again. Yeah, and again, Theo's going down. Not ideal. Getting caught out in a rather awkward fight there at the end. The mail is were out and... Uh... Took a little bit of a time, but eventually Theos caught and 40% advantage now for OP. And we've seen 20% advantages works already in this game for Mandem. But now the soldiers flying. Nice shot there from Utka on to the flying Nubi, but that might be it in terms of that so far. The Utah is still quite a long way actually away from OP, so there is potential to try and re aggress here. Another shot from Utka over onto Blanca. Lardo's getting caught too. The collapse is actually in over behind and. Garda, they hold strong, they hold fast, and they are able to actually keep walking forward. There was only three survivors there over for Mandem, and despite the Uber, they're having to maybe give up their own second. You can see them playing quite aggressive in lower, right? They know they have this advantage, so they're going to come right back in here. And Shappy not able to get out of KK in time. I don't think the scout should be able to clean him up. And there we go. Demo kill is fouled in the trading of that Uber. As we're trying to get into mid now. Big demo kill for Manda, but maybe not quite the HP that they need to be able to further contest. Just trying to heal up, but you have to watch Teos' Uber charge bar here as we are going forward. But the space isn't quite there. Theos is in on a flower here on second. We could just wrap. Ring around the rosy, try to get onto this cap and settle because now Theos is 100% and the Zuba might be actually really good for Garda. It absolutely could be, and there's players getting caught in behind. Fancy getting caught in Cafe is really, really big. Nubi over there in Flowers did get the kill over onto Butka, but that was about it. The bomb comes in behind though. Theos forced out. Really important force there coming in from Nubi, and means it sort of stalls the aggression for a moment because OP now has. 90% is going to be getting in time to start bullying her way onto this combo with a double scout chariot. Yeah, everyone gives in and has to give up the ground and the Uber charge isn't even used out from the Mandem team. So it's a great hold from them, really important force and they can start getting ready to stage their own attack. There is a soldier behind though to deal with. I, mean, I have to see if this soldier manages to find anything. It is another player down. Sniper up on the team as well, finding some success with this Uka Sniper. But Yorn in on second. He's going to be bombing a scout, hits one rocket. But now you're down to 70 uh. HP and you've announced your presence to the world. Really difficult to make anything happen instead. Now Garda are going to go in and actually get the force onto June. But Dios is 80 oh, HP, so making it zero. The collapse just comes in. And now Garda, they have nothing to show for themselves. Yeah, Theos, like, trying to buff Utka in choke, but, like, so close, like, an Uber could come flying around that blind corner so, so quickly, and, yeah, they were just completely blindsided by that one now as the rest of the team are getting their way in. You're spotted out by Blank, surely not long for this world. It's a full wipe for the entire team, and Fancy already pushing last. The entire team is, like, clean with this soldier, and Fancy's like, you know what, I don't care about second, I'm going to start putting stickies on last. We'll, uh, we'll start trying to get as much damage in as we can. Utka in forward spawn is, uh, having a peep. Bit of an open stare off <laughs> between uh, between two and Lardox. Okay, sure. Yeah, he's not going to contest that. Instead, he's just going to look at a corner, go back to last, <laughs> I guess. As now it's actually Fancy just in, and we're getting two kills already. It's Yawn falling, so is Bud. Everyone kind of falling on both sides. It's a bit chaotic here, but the health bars are just so much lower for Garda because they've all gone to zero. One scout left alive. Who's are trying to hold on, and they just don't. Now three nil up here for Mandem within ten minutes and Garda are just finding no answers to anything at the moment. No, it, again, they, they had a tiny, tiny peep of a chance when I thought they were going to cap second earlier, but the, the force comes in at the Theos, and then from that moment on, they just as soon as the momentum go, starts going the way of Mandem, it always spirals out of control. There's, they've never quite managed to stem the bleeding in these times when they're getting pushed back. They've never quite managed to get a good force at a good time or get their own Uber charge up to slow things down. But mid-fight number four, Maybe this could be the time when things change. They're getting their players out, they're getting their players out and healthy as well, which is very, very important. Not happened too many times so far. Shappy taking the brunt of the spam so far, and actually taking a lot more spam from Blank and getting mulched down by these scouts running across the point. 
These scouts are doing so much work, and it's Theos going down already. There's a little bit of a 1v1 happening here on the second as uh, as Blank tries to get the kill onto Bud, but instead, I think both teams are just going both sides are just choosing. Bud. We're not fighting instead. Bud wants to go in onto June. It's a decent first rock damage, but we're not fighting the second with the pistol. Just barely cleans up now onto June. Theos is back alive with Shappy to heal as well, and somehow, some way, it's two scouts up for Mandem on mid, getting the cap. Shappy not there to contest, but Nubby now up on the sniper himself. And there's been a sniper on this on this map at like pretty much all points during this game, and now there's two. We've got Utka and Nubby both picking up the rifle, but on Utka's side, it, it's a bit of a, an odd decision because they, they, they had a decent size advantage. The, the good thing about Theos dying so, so early on that mid is that when Theos spawns in, there, there is about a 30% advantage that they could push off should they decide to do so. And that Uber charge is coming up so, so soon. So if they're going to get going, they better getting, get buffed up and start clustering it towards these chokes pretty shortly. But they're still got a sniper on the board, still playing it very, very far back. I'm not sure if that's what they're keen on doing. At the moment now, Settling into a bit of more of a sniper stalemate. This really comes down to who gets the other sniper kill first, and then kind of who gets to peak, and then maybe we'll see an actual frag. At the end, ends up impacting the game a little bit more. Most of the time, you end up sort of shooting a soldier that's standing still for a second around a corner or something, and you don't really find much. It's very rare, especially I think on this map, unless your sniper gets like a god angle through flower or something, you're actually going to headshot a medic. So I'm desperately trying to cast the curse here. You can hear what I'm saying, right? Ben well, Nubby's trying to set up towards flowers. The it's happening. of the play that oh, Nubby just walks peak. in through flowers and headshots a medic. Oh, the peak's coming very, very far. One shot fired, but not going to land any damage so far. I'm sure Nubby's going to be in for round two very, very shortly. There's the second peak getting ready. There's Yawn in close, Shappy in close as well. They're rotating players in to try and force Nubby off this angle. And uh, Utkar, I believe, hits the headshot there over onto Nubi as a side piece sniper. This is a real highlight of gameplay here, and Nubi wins it out. This is a sniper down here for the side of Nubi, so he gets to go for a further beat. But the demo spam is just too strong instead of pumped to trade here. We're actually getting an early kill here onto Yorn from the flank. For the side of Mandem, now they can look to push back in. Two frags as the Uber's fading, and everyone on the red side is a complete disarray. It's a body shot kill onto Boot as well, and this is disaster here for Remove as they just can't get in. Another kill oh, here for nice. Fancy. He's got to get the Tarn out. He can't push his back, by the way. He's just going to die if he turns this around. Okay, yeah. he's 18 HP. He's fine. <laughs> but we're walking on to last. There's two players up, and we're getting the second cap already. Soldier eats a pipe before he can rocket jump, and I think this might just be another round of the books. This is again another example, like one frag, that one sniper v sniper goes the way of Mandem, the entire round falls apart for Garda. And this is just happening time and time again, like Mandem, they're so good at just spiralling these advantages that the sniper wins the fight and then it forces the trade out, they catch a player in the trade, they then, you know, scatter around, they catch a couple of players in the retreat too, and they're already looking out last, and now we are onto, we are onto troll, there's a sticky jumper and a uh, cleaner's carbine sniper that I'm seeing, and a pyro, Gardera checks out, they're done. This is Shappy in a dream, he's got one mission, is to kill the enemy demo, and he hits none of the shots, it's a dead demo man going into the middle, Utka up on the huntsman as well, wants to get something to work, but this is uh, very much a Garda, embracing the garbage time as we're running in, and they don't feel themselves being able to do much. It is actually a kill on to June because a lot of swapped over to the medic Uka on the cleanest carbine because quite a crit boost that he might want. But pushing He's got 49% been building the cleanest carbine pretty decently so far. So maybe the mini crits could come in pretty big later on. There's actually big aggression now over towards Blank who is taken down Lardox. Is uh, gonna drop the uh, <laughs> the player there is <laughs> gonna have to retreat all the way back to Boulder. Player's advantage now. We, we are in we are pro lander at this point. Like, what is even going on? Fancy's in behind, just made himself <laughs> at home in enemy lobby. We've got players walking in through choke. Utka on the cleanest car, but is winning this fight with Boulder for now. Ooh, gonna have to dance around back into lobby and is taken down finally. But in the meantime, Fancy has been upended from the spot in lobby. The pyro comes in and the drop. Oh my <laughs> word. Yeah, this is uh, this is dead time. I what yeah. like? What could you even say? I mean, it's chaotic, right? I mean, they're taking this fight. There's a nubby going down as well. One scout, all the remains. It's a complete wipe. The first one that we've seen. This entire thing. Four guard up and Terry. All it takes is a pyro. A demo with a sticky jumper and a sniper on the huntsman. Fancy out, <laughs> fancies himself. A bit of sniper himself. Uh, not gonna last too long. Yep. Nope. Never nope. mind. Uh, yeah, not allowed. Banned. 
Yon comes in and uh, gets that important kill. Lots of forward spawns coming in though from at the Mandan side, so I'm sure they're very, very keen to fight this one out. Lardux sat alone at the back of Cafe, but Boulder is there to clean up things with kills onto Theos and onto Yon also. So, like, the real back and forth, that's the thing you've got so many crazy pick classes, is like the shelf life of a medic is, is really not very high in these scenarios. You've got Theos going down, like, Lardux was taken very, very weak again, and honestly, odds are that Lardux dies pretty damn shortly. There's a couple of attempts to. Oh my god! <laughs> the Huntsman kill comes out as well. Oh dear me. Yeah, this is uh, this is uh, this is uh, yeah. This is, this is the real game. This is what Gabe Newell intended us to do. I think let's uh, let's let's sort of detach from the game for a second and focus in on on, on how dominant Mandem have been this so far, right? Like it takes it takes a little bit to take a Prem team and just put them completely out of their element to the point. But I feel like they just go off class because they don't think they could possibly win anymore, right? Like just absolutely crushing on them. Or yeah, just crushing them completely, right? They didn't have an answer for anything. It felt like in all of the fights, Mandem just come out on top. No real contest at all for the side of Garda. Unable to find their footing at all. They were doing it for the first like nine minutes of process, but then after that, nothing's been said. They've had nothing to say at, at any point. And uh, it's just it's just really mad and finding out, coming out on top here. Pistol for Boulder as well. Yeah, that's the thing is, like, uh, Mandem, like, for the most part, like, they haven't... It, it must be so, so difficult to play against a team like this, where you give them the tiniest, tiniest edge they run with it every single time. There's, they've never, like, really fluffed anything in this whole game. Like, the couple of mids that we saw one earlier on on, um, on process were, were from guard doing great bombs and catching players and having really good aggression, but other than that, it's just been Mandem on top in every single engagement, and, and I understand why they feel this way as the fifth round comes through. Like, it must be so crushing for Garda to have to play this game because the, the Mandem just are not letting them play the game at all. It's so, so difficult. And commiserations now to Garda Panteri. I don't think it technically puts them out of the playoffs race yet, but it definitely puts their destiny out of their own hands. There's still some wacky stuff that could happen, and they, they, they might end up in that fourth place anyway. I'm pretty sure. But, I, but I think they're out. I think they're out. They're out. They're out. Yeah, because okay. four fans have to play a Pepper's Pizza Party, and one of those is getting points. Oh so, yeah. So they're 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 done for the for the season. Unless there's a there's a default where no one gets any points. That's true. It gets nullified. Or like... There's a there's a there's a game so horrific <laughs> <laughs> that the admins look at it and are like, no, no one gets anything. I don't know. Maybe both teams drop in, drop out. Last I yeah. We'll, we'll see. But uh, yeah, that is Mandem looking really, really strong across the board. Looking really good. They had a really sort of very close series against New Panzer last week and now bouncing back against sort of other opponents. They're playing with Mercs as well. But they, I mean, yeah, um, what is there to say, right? Nubby played this game so well. He's really, really good at Sunshine. But Boulder, I, what is there to say? <laughs> like, look at this. Ah, oh, that is. <laughs> big numbers in it like <laughs> I don't know what else can be said that hasn't already been said Boulder one upping the DPM from the first game of course but like I don't know games like this where it's a it's a diff in every regard not just on like everyone's mechanical level the coordination level the speed level the timing level it was like again a phenomenal phenomenal performance from, from all of Mandem and uh, once again they've solidified that top spot in the groups this is the fourth season in a row I think where they've uh, they've, they've topped out the, the league so now is where the real test comes for Mandem, I think, because they, they've made it into playoffs with this top seed again. And the couple of times previously they've faltered. Last season it went really well for them, but they've got to carry on this form into playoffs. This is some of the best we've seen them play in quite some time. These last couple of weeks have been great for them, but they've really got to barrel this through because we've seen in the past in these pressure moments, things can get to them. I have to see all eyes on playoffs for them now as they... Have a bit more time to regroup and focus on the playoffs as the other teams that we're looking, at least two out of three of those teams that we're looking to, to sort of make it to playoffs, both Skeda and uh, and New Panzer, we will be seeing at uh, Dortmund next week. Remember, guys, there's a, there's a land coming up and it's starting next week and we just had a meeting about it last night and we're really excited about it. However... Just a quick little check-in on the other teams as I desperately try to open the top-tier tables because there <laughs> is a game. You watch this and think, ah... Could watch a bit more TF2. You want a bit of a land preview. Speaking of that, tomorrow we will have Pepper's Pizza Party playing against Four Fence. Who, again, Four Fence not making it to land. Flame in the chat all you want. But 
Pepper's Pizza Party will be at LAN. You want to see them in action a bit. Get excited for LAN. That will be tomorrow. However, unless you have anything else to say, Ben, I think, uh, I think it yeah, might well, be time. Yeah, there's still four games left this week. Do come back, do uh, do follow us, and do catch the land coming up next week. But there's still, as you say, that fourth spot is still wide open. Guard are out of the race now, but nearly everyone else is still in. So do watch it. High stakes on the line. So yeah, see you all tomorrow.